Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. These guys are very much an up and coming brewery. I've had a couple of really nice beers from them over the last kind of year or two. And based on those experiences, I would say the plaudits that this brewery have been getting are certainly well deserved. But the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a collaboration with two home brewers who brew their beers together on under the one name and it is supposed to be a pretty good one this actually so I have to say I'm curious to see how it turns out so hopefully this is another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so um yeah for this review then we are going to head up towards the Gothenburg area once again a Utebor as you would say in Swedish the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast Gothenburg catchphrase as always because it is the, the channel tradition these days and for this review we're going a little bit to the south of the city to Kung and we're having a look at another beer from Akia Bruikus and this beer is brewed in collaboration with Feldkanonen as well so um, yeah this particular beer is called the Hopnik 2 Hopnik 2 if you want to say it with a more kind of anglicised manner but uh, this one comes in at 7.2% ABV it's a New England hazy whatever you want to call it IPA and this beer was released as part of the Lokal Osmoskalig Disorten through Systembolaget here in Sweden for September of 2021 and it's released yearly uh, for uh, International IPA Day as part of the GBG Hopnik uh, event I guess we could say. So uh, yeah, second time this beer's been released. I never tried the one last year but uh, I have heard that both editions of this beer are pretty good. So yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we go. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Akia Broikus before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about the breweries then and obviously we'll kick off with Akia Broikus since these guys are I guess the home brewery as we could call them. So Akia Broikus as I've mentioned to you already are based in Kungsbaka to the south of Gothenburg, the Utebori up on the Swedish west coast and the brewery was founded by Christian Figved back in 2016. So he had worked as a lighting technician in the music industry and this had taken him all over the world. He was a sound engineer for the soundtrack of our lives and he also worked with the Wanna Dies and Tostrum as well. But he travelled around the world for eight years but then he had children and he decided that he wanted to stay put in his work life. So he started working 20% in the brewery and he brewed with a 300 litre brew kit but he quickly found this wasn't enough so he upgraded to a 1500 litre brewery in, in August of 2017 and this took the brewing capacity up to 40,000 litres of beer per year. In 2018 he brewed around 10,000 litres of beer and then he upgraded the brewery again in 2019 to further increase the capacity and further in 2021 with the addition of a 1500 litre brew kit. But um, Christian also has a history of letting different home brewers brew at the brewery and they've just hired a Victor N as well to be their brewer. But the brewery itself can be found in the old Alfors mill in the town and the name of the brewery is actually an abbreviation of the Swedish name for this. Um, I can't remember exactly what, how it went, but I think I mentioned it in the first video. But yeah, Akia is just an abbreviation of uh, the full name of the Alfors Mill. But as of September 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 60 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. But like I said, a very new and upcoming brewery. I've had quite a few good beers from these guys but I think mainly different kinds of IPAs but we have had one dark beer from these guys although I can't remember if that was um, an IPA and I think the last one that we had was a lager as well but we've had a rye leaning uh, we've had a rye IPA, we've had a West Coast IPA, we've had a New England double, um, quite a few different varieties. But these guys are getting a lot of praise at the moment 
for their New England Hazy IPA. So definitely worth checking out this brewery if that's the sort of beer you're into. But um, yeah, that's all we can really say about Arkea Brew Crews for just now. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can, of course, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, that's that. So to tell you a wee bit about Felt Canonen, and there isn't actually too much available on these guys. All we can really say that uh, Felt Canonen is the home brewing brainchild of Martin Nicholson and uh, Joachim Hugman, and they've now brewed together for a couple of years. There wasn't anything else really mentioned about these guys in the Beer News Punk SA articles. So maybe for the next year's uh, one, I'll try and uh, contact these guys and see if we can say a little bit more about them and what they do outside of beer and things like that but as I mentioned earlier this beer is brewed um, as a year release at their kind of um, uh, you know it's them that started this off I forget the word that I'm looking for but uh, the guys from Felt Canonen um, they are the ones who instigated brewing this beer that's what uh, their instigation that's the word I was looking for well done brain but um, yeah this beer as I said is brewed as a yearly release for the GBG Hopnick event which is an annual event that is part of the IP, uh, International IPA Day in Gothenburg. And Gothenburg, as I've told you, is the craft beer capital of Sweden. So much thing, uh, so much stuff going on there, actually. But um, yeah, I'll put the link to their Facebook page in the video description for you below, and also the Untapped page as well, where you can have a look at the different beers they did. I think there was five or six different beers listed on there so far but uh, yeah that's all we can say about them check out those links but let's get on and actually have a look at the beer itself then so uh yeah that's the end of your history section so as you can see this beer is another 440 milliliter can i'm just watching because the white if you look at it it reflects like hell if you bring it too clo close to the, the camera because the light we've got behind it but uh, yeah 7.2 percent new england hazy ipa as we said this beer i believe cost me 40 five Swedish kroner so that is four euros fifty about four pounds sterling uh, somewhere in the region I guess of like five dollars fifty American for those of you watching over there but as we say 450 milliliter can there you can see on the side let me just bring that in so you can see there is the Akia Bruker symbol you can see the third canon and above that and there is the Hopnik second edition thing there maybe I put it like this it's a bit better there you go just checking that you can see that there you are but uh yeah it certainly looks nice plain silver top on this one and as i said released as part of the local osmos galut sorting it through system Bolaget for september of 2021 but yeah 7.2 percenter let's get this guy out and we'll see how we get on very curious about this ah, it's okay it's all right it opened so let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste in there. So yeah, I only ordered, as I told you in the other videos, I only ordered a few from the Low Colors Mosca League this month. Um, but yeah, I wanted something else from Akia, and this is the one that just kind of caught my eye because it was called, you know, Hopnik, and I'd seen, I'd heard the last one was pretty good. So I thought, why not with this one? So um, yeah, anyway, let's get started then. So, as you can see, the um this beer has poured it actually looks a little bit more like a kind of west coaster to be honest with you it's not the haziest of uh, new england that you're going to come across but yeah before the head disappears i would say this beer is poured with a perfect white head it doesn't even look creamy or anything that is perfect white but there's a solid two-thirds finger to this one um, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but carbonation isn't too visible otherwise and in terms of color you guys can see this um, I would say that this one is a very bright, uh, yeah, straight up bright yellow, actually. Let me just adjust the light here, because I think it's not at its best position. There we go. I think that's a wee bit better. So, no. Anyway, yeah, there you can see the colour of the beer a wee bit better, I think. But yeah, I would say this one is a little bit more of a kind of bright, rich, yellow colour than this one. It has got a wee bit of an amber hint to it. So if we're describing this one in terms of fruit juices, as we often do, I'd say this one is a little bit more like a kind of mixed uh, tropical fruit juice. So I do like how that um, how that goes together. So uh, yeah, remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. That determines the magnitude of the colour. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But uh, an IPA like this 
is going to have a wort boil somewhere in the region of you know 60 to 90 minutes nearer 90 minutes of course but um yeah it looks the part this one and going by the color of this i don't think it's got too much in the way of uh, brown sugary malt and it actually it does look as if it's more a kind of straight up um you know barley malt wheat malt oat kind of thing from uh, on the malt base but uh, yeah in terms of the level of haze for a 7.2 percenter it's one of the less soupier and gloopier ones that I've come across in recent times it has a little bit more of that kind of naturally hazy vibe to it rather than being uh, you know rather than being uh, you know soupy and yeah soupy and gloopy so definitely more of a natural haze kind of thing to this rather than a soupy and gloopy type thing but uh, yeah remember the level of haze on this is in these beers is dependent on the yeast and then the oat and the wheat content as well. These are the three variables that will decide that. But certainly, as I say, not the soupiest and gloopiest, but overall, when we talk about the appearance of this beer, nothing particularly surprising about it when you consider what style of beer this is. But uh, yeah, I think that's everything about the appearance. Let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this then. I'm very curious about this beer. Mmm, that smells quite interesting actually. Yeah, um, so as I've told you in previous reviews, I think there's six different directions you can take a New England IPA. They can be yeasty and farmhousey, rye leaning and grainy, uh, white bready and wheaty, or sorry if you like, wheaty and bitey, um, oaty and creamy, uh, barley malt leaning and more bready, or they can be a little bit more kind of brown sugary leaning. I think that is, um, that's fair to say. But um, yeah, the aroma out of this one is... Um, the aroma out of this one is pretty damn nice actually. Um, so first impression of it is that it's actually quite a bready and yeasty leaning New England IPA. I, would, I think that's fair. I think everything else takes a little bit of a, a back seat to that on the malty yeasty side of things. The green component comes across as quite grassy and soft. Then you've got a lovely soft kind of um, tropical, um, tropical and juicy fruit to it. So yeah, it comes across quite nicely this one. But let's break that aroma down for you just a wee bit more before we taste it. So yeah, hoppy side of things then. Um, why am I saying hoppy side of things? It's always the malt we start with. The brain is getting terrible in these videos, guys. But yeah, malty side of things then. So the backbone of this beer, absolutely, it's a bit of a kind of fresh white bread sort of thing. There's a bit of fresh white bread in there and then underneath that, you've got a wee bit of that more kind of grainy, bread crusty sort of vibe to the beer, but yeah. A little bit of a bread crust, you know, soft, white bready kind of thing sitting on top of that. You can almost smell the sort of flowery character from, you know, that fresh baker's roll, if you like. So quite a bit of that going on in this one. You can smell a nice little bit of a more kind of um, thicker wheaty kind of character to it. So I do like how that goes together. You can smell the wheat just kind of thickening, um, thickening it up a little bit. But you've also got a bit more of a kind of OT uh, creamy note coming out of this one too. You can certainly smell the oats also smoothing out the beer and they give you this nice kind of smooth sort of thing but there's one or two little oaty characters to the beer as well for sure. There's a little bit of a, an oaty, kind of woody actually, that's what I was going for. My brain is really bad these days guys honestly but yeah you can smell one or two little woody undertones to this but at the back of the nose you can certainly smell some of that yeasty uh, character out of this one and a wee bit of the kind of bitiness of the wheat too. So a wee bit of wheaty bitiness, but you can smell that sort of slightly farmhousey, yeasty kind of thing. So as I always say, quite often these beers can display multiple characteristics, these different kinds of leanings you can get that I was talking about <clears throat> in the New England IPAs. So yeah, a bit woody, smooth and bready, bit of wheat to it, a bit of oat, but not those two, I would say, take a backseat to the other things. So mainly soft and bready and a bit more yeasty. I would say those components are the most Kind of prominent things it's almost got a little bit of a jacob's cream cracker vibe to it as well so that's interesting but let's look at the hoppy side of the beer then so green component first yeah green component in this is pretty solid actually so yeah on that note green component um you get a little bit of earthiness out of this one absolutely there's a nice wee bit of earthiness to it there's a wee bit of herbal quality too but not too much to that. Uh, I would say that it's the floral character and the grassiness that come out most and the floral character is actually quite bright, not spicy, just quite nice and bright, not really deep or dank either, but I do get quite a bit of a kind of zesty, grassy character off this one, which is interesting. And I'm trying to figure out exactly what hop um, this could be. Um, it's a bit difficult to say actually, 
Um, there's something tells me it might be a little bit, it's something very, very soft. It could be a little bit of like Sabro or something like that, but I don't really get the coconutty vibe that you you get from Sabro in this. But it does have like an zestiness almost that you can get. Sabro, if you can if you combine Sabro and Mosaic, um, they'll give you this kind of zestiness. And it reminds me of another beer that I've had recently that had that combination in it, and that's why it's coming to mind now. But um, yeah, on the fruity side of things, there are a few things going on with this beer, absolutely. So for me, for me, yeah, you get a wee bit of a stronger tropical note to this one. There is a, I don't really get much of a passion fruit or anything to this. I find this one's a little bit more mangoey, so more kind of oily and still quite bright and juicy mangoey note that you get um, out of it. So a wee bit of, um, you know, as I say, a little bit of a, uh, there's a wee bit of an apricot -y note to it as well. For sure, yeah, there is a wee bit of an apricot note in there, maybe a wee touch of pineapple too. Some of these softer tropical notes, but I get quite a bright, ripe mango off this, which is, is kind of interesting. So, number of things that could be, it could be El Dorado. I don't think, I don't think this one, it, it could be Citra, but mm, not 100% sure. It could be Citra, it could be a bit of Galaxy or Victoria's Secret, something like that. And there's a whole host of New Zealand hops it could be. It's difficult to play guess the hops with beers these days, but... You know, I do get a wee bit of an orangey note out of this one, a kind of tangerine orangey sort of thing. It is, it's got a bit of zestiness to it, like I said, but it has got a more kind of oily character too. So that's a little bit hard to place. And I do get just a wee bit of a lemon liney kind of note uh, behind the grassy parts on the front note, front of the nose as well. So that's really interesting. So yeah, for me, it comes across, it gives you everything you would kind of expect from a modern um, New England IP, I guess we could say. And a little bit farmhousey and bready leaning this one. On the malt base as we said but everything else is you know um everything else is is quite similar to i think to what we've had from um akia Brucus in the past but let's get the rest of it into the the glass and we'll um we'll take a look at this one so yeah there we are all poured now you can see it has got a little bit more hazy with that last pour but not overly much but i think it's time to go for this then so this one is the hopnik version 2 7.2 percent new england ipa from Akia Bruikus, brewed in collaboration with Ferk and Onan, the field can and the field gun, I guess you could say. I forgot to say that earlier. Um, a home brewing group, uh, and these guys, as we say, are based in the Gothenburg area, Kungsbaka, for Akia Bruikus. But let's look at this. Slanja, Skull, and cheers. Ooh. Yeah, first impression of this one is quite similar to the Roma. This is actually quite a sort of farmhousey, you know, a sort of saison crackery. Uh, oh no, saison's maybe not the right word, but it's a kind of, you know, crackery, yeasty sort of leaning uh, New England IPA, this one, definitely. And that lingers into the aftertaste too. It's got a good bit of graininess to it, this beer. But the green component is, um, is quite nice, actually. I like how that goes together. Um, and then the fruitiness is quite just soft actually, which suits the whole vibe of the beer. So this is solid, this. This is pretty solid actually. So, um, yeah, where do we start with this then? So, the middle and back third of your palate then, the malty, yeasty kind of thing. Backbone of the beer, is actually a little bit woody. I get quite a bit of a woody character out of it, but also a kind of Jacob's Cream Cracker sort of thing. It's sort of a combination. And it has, on top of that, you get a bit more of a kind of bread crusty type vibe to it. It's actually quite a grainy bread crust, and you can feel that it gets grainier and grainier the further back into the, the palate you go. So I like this one. I do like it. Yeah, it's interesting this. It does get woodier, grainier and more crackery like the further into the um into the aftertaste you go. So I like that. I do I do like how that goes together, absolutely. Um but yeah, on the um mm, as we say, on the on top of that, you certainly get a nice little bit of a kind of more it's actually a little bit more of a mixture between white bread and brown bread. It's like you've got a brown bready layer on top of the bread crust, then a white bready layer on top of that. So I think the brown bready layer 
it's maybe one kind of malt or maybe the yeast that's doing that then you get the wheat on top of it which really thickens it out the wheat is the thickening agent in this one the wheat is the thickening agent in this one mm. yeah definitely we'd stick with that but let's focus on that middle third of your palate then the wheat gets a bit bitier towards the back palate too but yeah let's focus this so we've got woody kind of crackery notes bread crust brown bread white bread and the wheat let's focus on the middle third of the palate for the moment now so on top of that you can feel the oatiness you can feel the oats go right down that middle line of your palate actually a middle kind of trench sort of thing which i um yeah that kind of middle trench of your tongue which is kind of nice and you can feel that again smoothing out the beer and it spreads out a little bit towards the kind of um towards the edge of the palate actually so you get a little bit of that and um, it, it sort of, it's a bit smooth in the middle, but it sweetens up as you go further out. But on top of that, you've got a nice oily um, Werther's Original type quality. Um, you can feel that nice, yeah, Werther's Original kind of butterscotchy, brown sugary sort of thing. I really do like that, actually. So, um... Yeah, Werther, yeah, say Werther's original, butter candy, butter scotch sort of thing. I really like that about the beer. It really sweetens up the more that you drink of it as well. Actually, in the middle third of your palate, really smoothens out and slickens up a little bit. As we say, the further you go into the um, into the flavour with this beer. But uh, yeah, it works out. It does work out quite nicely. I'd say there's maybe a teeny little touch of a slightly just straight up caramel note right in the dead center your pattern of course at 7.2 percent that's the booziness of the beer there's no doubt in my mind about that but yeah and uh, the brown sugary side of this beer is quite nice and just quite slick so i think we can leave everything at that for that middle third of your palate but um yeah let's go on to the back third of your palate then so border region between middle and uh, middle and back third uh, the border region between the middle and the back third of your palate bit of a bready build up there again a nice kind of grainy bread crusty sort of thing then into the, the back third, as you see, a bit of a kind of bread crusty note, a um, bit of a kind of bread crusty note. So we say you get more graininess out of it there. You can feel the brown bread on top of it, which is a bit more grainy, the wheaty bitiness further back on it. Then on top of all of that, you have a wee bit more of the kind of yeasty character. So you can feel the flavour on that back third of your palate is taller. As I always say, I always find the flavour on the back third of your palate is a little taller than the 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 middle third of your palate where it's a bit more kind of condensed down so you can feel that more airy yeasty sort of thing coming out of it and it's got a wee bit of that farmhousey grainy kind of crackery sort of thing coming out of it but as i say back of the palate as you come further forward it condenses down and then just squashes together but yeah that covers the malty and uh, and yeasty component of this beer i would say so let's focus on the green component then for the hops so back corners of the palate there's definitely a wee bit of earthiness to this i do get quite a little bit of earthiness there but i think the graininess from the 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 yeast in this one is kind of spilling over a wee bit but as you move further forward it's a little bit more kind of herbal and as you push further forward towards the kind of the front corners of the palate it's um the front corners of the palate um, it becomes a little bit more kind of floral and aromatic. So I do like how that um, that goes together in this one for sure. So yeah, it's got a nice floral ar aromaticity to it. It's quite bright, as I say. It doesn't really have that kind of deep dank sort of thing to it or any spiciness. It's just quite nice and bright. And around the front curve of the palette, it's a little bit more grassy. A little bit more kind of zesty and it's got a wee bit of a kind of um, it has got a wee bit of a more um it's got a little bit of that kind of wet grassy sort of vibe to it as well so um yeah i like how it goes together that one the green component is quite nice and it is quite in keeping with the sort of more greeny um farmhousey type vibe that the beer has the 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 earthiness and the herbal quality is certainly more prominent than the aroma would have you believe so i can appreciate that about this beer for sure um but yeah on the uh fruity side of things then let's look at that front third of your palate so the border region between front third and middle third of your palate again you get a little bit of a bready build up to this one you can feel that there a nice little bit of bready build up and a wee bit of a 
uh, yeah, a bit of a Brady build, a bit of a kind of brown Brady greeny sort of thing. Then the base of that front third of your palette is more sort of, um, you get some of the kind of woody crackery sort of things, a little bit of a brown Brady note there. And um, yeah, I think it goes together quite nicely in that sense. And on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll the way out of the beer. So yeah, towards the back of that front third of your palette then, you get a wee bit more of a kind of, um, you get a wee touch of passion fruit out of it, but not too much. And then as you move further forward, it's a bit more kind of mango-like and and sort of um, and sort of oily in a sense. You get a nice little bit of a mangoey, oily kind of character out of it. And as you push towards the kind of front, uh, the front half of that front third of your tongue, you get some softer apricot notes and a little bit of pineapple and so on. But then as you move into the the front half of the front third of your palate, it's a bit more kind of. You get a wee bit of Sabro. I think I think there could be a little bit of Sabro in this just from the zest. And as I think Sabro and Mosaic might be the combination that's in here because it feels kind of quite familiar. Maybe Sabro Mosaic and maybe something like El Dorado or something like that. Yeah. Um, because yeah, you get a soft mangoey tropical note to it. That could be Simcoe as well, right enough, Simcoe El Dorado, something like that. And then as I say, you get a wee bit of, you get quite a wee bit of zestiness. You get a nice oily tangerine orangey character there but it has got a wee bit of zestiness to it and the reason that I think of Sabro and Mosaic is just I've seen I've had beers with the, this hop combination before and the flavour this really reminds me of it so yeah you've got a nice soft tangerine but a more oily zesty orange as well zesty and um, you know nice and zesty and also you do get a wee bit of a kind of slightly limey lime and limey note just behind the very front tip of the tongue and that's where the grassy esters come in but this is a lovely lovely tasting beer this one it's sort of it's grown on me quite a bit this uh since since the start of the tasting but it it is more of a kind of crackery farmhousey yeasty leaning new england ipa rather than anything else but yeah it's good it is good and you know we've had rye as i say we've had kind of more rye leaning and grainy um type in new england ipas from akia brucus before they're a little bit similar to the ones you'll find from the alchemist um over in the States, you know, the, the Heady Topper and the Focal Banger, they're sort of more like that, that more farmhousey, grainy type New England IPA, rather than the more kind of wheaty or, or oaty, creamy sort of things that you'll get from a lot of Swedish breweries. So these are a bit different, actually, which is interesting. So, yeah, I like it. Thumbs up to them once again. So thumbs up to Akia Brukus and to Felt Kanonen for this one as well. So if Felt Kanonen, if this is Felt Kanonen's recipe, then they've got a pretty solid base to, to go forward, I think, and go commercial. So more power to them. But yeah, let's look at the mouthfeel then just to round off this review. So overall, I would say this is pushing towards the top end, the mid-bodied. The carbonation is smooth. It's actually quite an oily and slick beer, this one, which is interesting for a more kind of farmhousey leaning uh, IPA. I would definitely say that. But yeah, um, it's 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 good actually. Um, I'd say that the multi that the, in terms of IBUs and stuff, I think this is a fairly standard thirty IBU. Um, the malty yeasty side of things, it's a bit more grainy and it does have a wee bit of that kind of dryness to it in the malt base, but you've got a bit of smoothness in there and there is a small degree of sweetness, but like I say, this is a sort of crackery, grainy, woody leaning, almost like yeasty type New England IPA, definitely. Then you've got some nice oily, um, juicy, fruity characters coming out of it, so it really gives you, um, it really gives you a little bit of uh, of everything this one so yeah it's, it's nice the fruity side of things let's see a bit oily juicy a wee bit of tropical fruit but i'd say this is mainly a kind of orangey citrusy kind of thing that comes out of this one so um yeah i like how this um how this beer goes together in that sense so yeah we can leave it there so this one is the hopnik version 2 7.2 percent new england ipa from Akia Brucus and Kungsbacher Brewed in collaboration with Felt Kanonen, a, home, uh, a pair of home brewers from the Gothenburg area. But yeah, cool to return to Akia once again and to introduce Felt Kanonen on the channel for the first time. So maybe we'll have a look at the Hopnik 3 
next year actually so yeah thank you again for watching check out my social media let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from Arkea Brew because let me know your thoughts on Felt Canonan as well and hopefully we can do a few dedicated reviews to Felt Canonan at some point in the future as I said if this is their recipe I think they've got a pretty solid basis to go forward with and turn uh, commercial but we feel to try a few of their other beers as well different styles and things like that but yeah let's leave it there thank you for watching check out my social media check out Arkea and Felt Canonan's and we'll see you in the next review. Slanja, Skull, and cheers.